Hey everybody, I want to uh, make a short little video here um, of a topic that I get asked to help with quite a bit. And that is specifically getting your RDS environment to work with uh, an NPS server that's using the MFA extension. So to understand how this all sort of ties together, with regards to the interaction with um, NPS, it's important to make some um, un to have to have an understanding of kind of the way the flow works through here. So when a user is connecting into your uh, remote desktop gateway uh, inside of your gateway you have policies configured. Um, here, I've got my um, RDCAP policy configured to use a central network policy server. And that is pointing to my NPS server that has the MFA extension on it. I've also got some resource authorization policies. And in that, I'm defining who's allowed to use, um, who's allowed to come through the gateway. Uh, so that's a, an important distinction here um, that we need to make is the authentication is happening at your, um, at your gateway. The gateway takes the credentials that come in and sends those to a DC and confirms that those credentials are correct. But the authorization component is actually handled through NPS. And even if you're not using a central NPS server, it's still being controlled by NPS because when you install <clears throat> the gateway, you are also installing a local instance of NPS. And so when you are going through there, and this is my gateway server, when you're going through there, the wizard, or you're defining these policies here, these policies are on the back end configuring the NPS policies. And so you're going to see more, possibly more policies on mine because as I changed from a using the local uh, NPS server to using a central NPS server, when I was pointed locally, it created these policies. Now, before, um, in my resource authorization policy, my RD wrap policy, I had my domain admins defined as the group that was allowed to come in. And so it created the policy down here to allow those groups, to allow those users in that group. Now, you can tell that NPS is doing no authentication because inside of the constraints tab, you'll notice this is selected. Allow clients to connect without negotiating an authentication method. What that means is that I'm going to allow users to come through without having to go and authenticate them against uh, the domain. It's, I'm not going to perform any authentication. But I am still going to be looking to see if they're a member of that group. And that's how the authorization piece is handled. When we change it to use a central NPS server, what's important to remember is that those rules, those authorization rules, are not able to be created by the gateway anymore. So you have to create those rules on the back end server on your own. 
So if we go, if we look here, you'll notice now I've, I have a different group. I'm no longer using domain admins, which is what you saw in that local policy. I've changed it, but it didn't make any changes to the local policy because I'm using a central NPS server. Now on my central NPS server, my backend NPS server, I have created um, connection request policies that accept the inbound connection, hand it off here to the network policy. And the network policy I've defined to look for that Windows group. And I'm also looking at the client friendly name. So I, I wanna match that client friendly name. The client friendly name being the name that I've given it when I created the Radius client entry. So I wanna match, if it's coming from that Radius client, that's one check. And is the user a member of this group? That's the other check. But I'm not, remember, I'm not performing any authentication. And so if we do uh, uh, something else that I wanna show you as a good troubleshooting method, down here in the advanced RD Gateway settings, when you set your the server, the name of the uh, gateway server, uncheck the box here that says bypass so that you're sure that you're being sent through the gateway and uncheck this box here. Use my RD Gateway credentials for the remote computer. The reason that we want to uncheck that is because I want to see a prompt for each login. I want a prompt when I go to the gateway but I also want to be prompted when I'm being handed off to this backend server. And if I leave that box checked, it'll just reuse those credentials. So it's just a good troubleshooting method that I use to ensure that I see both authentications actually happen. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up my MFA device. Going to go ahead and attempt a connection here. All right, so this is some guy at nateharris.com. Password. Okay. Does it work? It does. Now I'm going to get prompted again. But this is, as you can see, a prompt to get to the back end. At this point, I'm not interested in actually logging in. I just wanted to confirm I could get through the gateway and that I'm getting through the gateway uh, with MFA. And that's all happening on this back end MPS server. So just really quickly, I just want to make a video here that kind of walks through it. That when a user comes in, and you're going, they're connecting to your gateway. The gateway is handling the authentication with their credentials to the domain. And then it's handing off the authorization piece to look at and see, is this user allowed to actually log in? And it's those policies on your MPS server that allows that to happen. So hopefully this is helpful uh, for you guys. Um, I have another video talking about the basic troubleshooting and the tools that I use for troubleshooting NPS with the MFA extension and confirming that that's all working. Um, and there's also a good article, Microsoft article that um, users can refer to when they set all of this up. So I'll post all that down below. And if, but if you have any questions, please post some comments. Um, you can also uh, send me an email. I work at uh, Microsoft, nathar at microsoft.com. And um, I'll be happy to help out. Thanks.